Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a program exclusively designed to promote reproductive health awareness and discuss fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. She's known as the Egg Whisperer. Fertility expert, Dr. Amy Lazadin. And you have yet another success story just launched by an East Bay fertility doctor. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Egg Whisper Show. I'm so excited to have Dr. Eduardo Harriton on today's show. Hi, doctor. Hey, how are you, Amy? I'm doing great. Thank you for joining us today. And such an important topic for us to be talking about, COVID-19 and pregnancy, with you as our special guest, co-investigator of the ASPIRE study. But before we get into COVID and pregnancy, I want our audience to learn a little bit about you. Tell us about yourself. Sure. So, um, I'm originally from Venezuela. I came to the States about 20 years ago or so, did all my training here. I went to medical school, business school, and residency at Harvard Medical School um, at Mass General and Brigham and Women's Hospital. And now I'm um, doing my fellowship at UCSF out in California, so pretty close to you. Well, I hope you'll stay in California. I did my res- I did residency, fellowship, Boston, Midwest, I hope you come here and stay and don't go. So we'd love to have you say. So what inspired you to go into medicine and more specifically fertility medicine? So I always um, wanted to do something in kind of like healthcare. I felt like it was a field like that had a really human aspect where you could be intrigued by the science, but also help people. I shadowed a lot of doctors when I was in college and I felt like this was both stimulating and at the end of the day, you just felt really good giving back. And then when I got to medical school, I was trying to figure out what to do. I always thought I would be an oncologist because it felt like a really unique time to help people uh, in a time of need. But then I got to my OBGYN rotation and I felt like it was similar in pregnancy. Uh, It was a time where people were vulnerable It was a time where women were willing to make lifestyle choices that were very important and long-term. Drug addicts were trying to quit. Smokers were trying to quit. And I felt like being part of that experience and being able to help women make smarter choices for them and make things that could be lasting um, was a great way to go. And then I got to fellowship and I um, to residency. And I realized that the incredible impact that helping patients build families can have. Um, And I was just sold. It's an amazing field. We have uh, great patients, people who are truly motivated. And being a father myself, I realized how tremendous that, tremendous impact that has had on my life. And I hope that I can give the same to my patients. So it's just rewarding day in and day out. Oh, that's so sweet. I think we're all in love with everything that you've said right now. And your patients are so lucky to have you as their doctor. No doubt about that. So tell us about the ASPIRE study. Sure. So the ASPIRE study uh, is a study that we launched out of UCSF. Um, We have uh, almost 80 partner clinics all over the U.S. And we're trying to understand the effect of COVID on pregnancy. As you know, and a lot of our listeners know, COVID is a new virus. We know very little about it. We know even less about its effect on pregnancy. And we have a lot of patients, a lot of women out there who are not even our patients who are really worried. They want to start their families, but they want to do so safely. That kind of same desire that I talked about before about having healthy babies and making smart choices is out there. And a lot of women and their partners feel it. So we wanted to understand a little bit more about the effect of of COVID in pregnancy and hopefully to help reassure women that it is okay to continue to get pregnant. I love that. How does a patient enroll? So patients can go to our website. It's aspire.ucsf.edu and they can join our study directly. A lot of our patients come through SART Clinic. We have about 80 clinics nationwide that have realized that this is a very important study and have joined us as partners to help us recruit you being one of them. So we really appreciate your support. Uh, We also allow patients in the community to sign up on the first trimester. So any patient who is pregnant and under 10 weeks can enroll into our study that way. And as someone who has enrolled for the study, what can they expect? What is their involvement? So the involvement of the patients uh, is um, multi-step. 
uh, one of the things that we want to understand is whether they develop COVID through pregnancy and at what time. So we mail them kits where they can prick their finger and collect blood. They do that every week in the first trimester and then every month in, in the second and third trimester. They fill out questionnaires initially daily about their symptoms. They fill out some baseline questionnaires to help un understand their fears, their habits, and then that kind of spaces out in the second and third trimester. Uh, and ultimately, they kind of help us follow them and their child until about a year and a half postpartum. This will give us a really complete picture about what happens to women in, throughout their pregnancies and after. Through the antibody testing, we'll have a sense of whether they contracted COVID. Some of them will have symptoms, but we know very well that many women are exposed to COVID and do develop antibodies throughout pregnancy without even knowing. So we'll have a good sense about when they got COVID, if they did or if they didn't. And then we will see if that has an effect on their delivery, their postpartum period, and then their child's development up to a year and a half. Yeah, I would love to have that information. So thank you for all the work that you're doing. With everything that you know about COVID, what kind of advice do you have for a woman who's just thinking about trying to get pregnant right now or already trying? I think it's very difficult to counsel women, and that was a little bit of the driver to the study. We are pretty much in a data-free zone uh, as it you know, pertains to pregnancy and COVID, especially in the first trimester. If you think about COVID, it started in Wuhan, China in December of 2019, and we are not nine months from that event. So it spread throughout the world more recently in the US in the last couple of months with a high prevalence of cases. So women who got exposed to COVID in the first trimester have not delivered yet. We know basically nothing about the first trimester. We know some about what happens in the rest of pregnancy from some studies that we've done. For example, we know that a study in New York at Columbia, about 12% of patients had known or suspected COVID. Most of them were mild to moderate. In Seattle, where the prevalence was a little bit less throughout the city, the percentage was closer to 3%. So there are women who are affected. It does not seem to make them sicker than the average population with COVID, which is very reassuring. Um, but what I say to women who are concerned about this is that to speak to their physician. You know, everybody's risk tolerance is a little bit different. Everybody's desire for pregnancy is a little bit different. And everybody's timeline is a little bit different. So you have to factor all of those into the equation. And I often think that a woman's physician is the best person to help them make that decision. Ultimately, it is a very personal decision. That's true. And what about for men? Are there any concerns about COVID for men? And, and how it might relate to their fertility? We don't have a lot of data either uh, for men, unfortunately. There is one study that was recently done out of China where they studied the semen of 38 patients. They were trying to look for COVID uh, while they were in the acute stage of illness. And basically, it's hard to know because they did find some uh, COVID in the samples, but they had no evidence of how the samples were collected. How do you make sure that the men after producing the sample did not cough on their hands and or cough on the cup? So I don't really have the ability to make a lot of conclusions out of that study. And I think the jury is still out. Um, so far, we are not having any different recommendations for males uh, with COVID uh, at this time. Right. I get a lot of questions from my patients, and I imagine you do as well. And one of the most common questions I'm getting right now is, uh, can I fly when I'm pregnant? What kind of advice do you give your patients about that, knowing about COVID? You know, this is a very special time. There are no guidelines or recommendations in terms of flying. What I usually say to my patients is that, you know, practice social distancing and avoid whatever you can avoid. There are situations where life makes you have to do things that you otherwise wouldn't. Sometimes you have to fly and there's no way around it. But if you can avoid flying, if you can avoid crowded spaces, make sure you do. Because until we find out more, the safest thing is to be safe and avoid those spaces. You're very nice. I just say no. <laughs> 
you can't fly. Mm -hmm. um, but I like your explanation a lot better. Maybe I'll just say, listen to Dr. Harriton's explanation. Okay, how about, can I go to a party with, you know, around 20 people as a guest? What, I mean, what would you say to that? I would say I would not recommend it. I mean, this again, we don't know the effects for sure. And if you want to do what's safest, I would avoid going to crowded events. You know, truly, even if you have to go out, I always tell my patients, hand washing before you go out, hand washing while you're out, hand washing when you get home, disinfect surfaces as much as you can, and always, always wear a mask. I know they're uncomfortable. I know it's not fun, but it is what's going to keep you safe. Yeah, and don't touch your men. <laughs> I heard that mnemonic, mouth, ear, mouth, eyes, and nose. <laughs> I like yeah. that one. Okay. Mucosal surfaces are how it's transmitted. So avoiding touching your face. You don't realize how much you touch your face until COVID came around and you try to avoid touching your face. Right, right. Do you think that people should consider egg freezing, sperm freezing, or embryo freezing because of COVID more now than before COVID? I don't think so. I mean, I, I don't think we have enough data to support that. Again, I think for some women who feel uncomfortable getting pregnant at this time and want to extend their reproductive lives by pursuing some sort of like egg or embryo freezing, I think a discussion with a physician is warranted. You or me or anybody around the country would be more than happy to see you and entertain that discussion, explain the risks and benefits. And if that's something for some women, they would want to know. They want to have the findings of the Aspire study before they go ahead and get pregnant. And that's perfectly acceptable. For some women, that might be what they want to do. But I do not recommend that for my patients. I just basically help explain what we know and what we don't know. And most of them then go and make a decision for themselves. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of people that are saying, I'm going to wait until there's a vaccine. But I feel like you're right. Waiting for findings from the Aspire study makes a lot of sense for sure. So I'm looking forward to all the data that's going to come out. And when do you expect your first findings or first study reports that you're going to be presenting to all the world? So we are uh, enrolling patients now. We have over 300 patients enrolled. Uh, thanks to people like you, some of our social media friends, and some of our partners around the country who are working really hard to spread the word and get women enrolled. We are incredibly grateful for our patients who have given us their time, their blood, and you know access into what is otherwise a very personal experience to help contribute to a greater good so that we're sitting across the table for women in a short period of time with more answers than we have now. In terms of when we hope to answer, we don't know yet. It depends on how fast recruitment goes. We are committed to getting answers out to the medical community, to patients, um, and to everybody as soon as we can. We're not going to wait till the end of the study to start sharing because we know that this is something that's on everybody's mind. But we have to make sure that the data that we present is safe and sound. I think one of the interesting things about the Aspire study is that we are following people prospectively. That means that rather than getting people that have COVID to sign up to a registry and let us know what happened, we're kind of following them before they get COVID. So we're going to have a much better and methodologically sound understanding of what's going to happen to them long term and whether this has an effect, because we will be able to compare people with COVID to people that didn't get COVID. And within the people that did get COVID, first trimester, second trimester, third trimester with symptoms, without symptoms. And that's going to be really, really helpful in, you know, determining is there a difference or is there no difference? Wow. Well, thank you. Thank you for all this information. And thank you for coming on the show. Can you remind us where someone can find the study if they want to sign up? Absolutely. So if you're interested in signing up, please come to our website. It's aspire.ucsf.edu. You can sign up on the link. You can read more about the study. We have videos. We have information. You can fill up a questionnaire. If you're eligible, anybody between four and 10 weeks of pregnancy is eligible to sign up. We will walk you through the consent. Make sure you understand what we're doing with the study. Make sure you want to participate. And if that's the case, you can sign the consents online and you can go, uh, you can have everything mailed out to you. We do not require you to come to hospital. We don't want women who are 
pregnant to be any more exposed. So everything that we ask you to do can be done in the safety of your own home. What's the most important thing you want people to know about COVID and fertility or COVID and pregnancy? I w- would say that everybody's risk tolerance is different and every person is unique. I think I personally, and I'm sure you do too, pride myself in treating patients and individuals. I try to understand where they're coming from, what kind of urgency they have, what kind of values they bring to the table, what kind of dynamic there is in the partnership. And with them, I try to help them make an educated decision about what the risk and benefits are and what kind of treatment or timeline or pregnancy course uh, they will take on. So what works for your friend or your sister is not what necessarily works for you. It's okay to feel different about risk. It's okay to feel different about pregnancy and work with your physician in trying to figure out what is best for you. We are more than happy to entertain your questions. We hope to be able to answer them better, but just feel comfortable that whatever you choose will be the right thing for you. Thank you. Thank you again for coming on. We really appreciate you. Thank and you so much may- for having me. Absolutely. And maybe when some of the findings come out, you can come back on and update us again. That would be my pleasure. Okay. Thank you. And thank you everyone for listening and watching. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and take a class, either the Tushy class, IVF class, or egg freezing class coming soon at eggwhisperedschool.com. Bye everyone. Bye Eduardo. Bye. Thank you, Amy. Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a program exclusively designed to promote reproductive health awareness and discuss fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. She's known as the Egg Whisperer. Fertility expert, Dr. Amy Vazadin. And you have yet another success story just launched by an East Bay fertility doctor. 